We are the largest democracy. And let's also, while we are at it, call ourselves the oldest. Our culture of republicanism goes back millennia. Phase one is expected to set the tone for the rest of the 2024 elections. Many believe that the NDA and the BJP begins as an underdog. Of course, over the last 10 years, the BJP has acquired an aura of invincibility. Between 2014 and 2024, the Narendra Modi anchored BJP has grown into the world's largest political party. It is also by far India's richest. But more than that, it has handed out resounding defeats to the opposition in both 2014 and 2019 Lok Sabha contests. So deflating has been the impact of the BJP's dominance that many opposition parties have privately conceded that the BJP is set for an easy win in 2024. The Prime Minister is so confident that he expects his part char so par in his words. The total number of seats in phase one is 102. There are key states that are up for grabs, not entirely, but parts of them. 12 seats, for example, in Rajasthan, in Uttar Pradesh 8, Madhya Pradesh 6, in Maharashtra, the swing state, the unpredictable one, 5 out of 48, Bihar 4, Assam 5, West Bengal 3 seats, Jammu and Kashmir 1. There are also union territories, four of them, but viewers, all eyes will be on Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu viewers is the state to watch out for. If the BJP is so far ahead of the competition, why you are entitled to ask is the BJP beginning its quest for a third term in office as an underdog? I use that term. Indeed, the assertion is counterintuitive. But here are three reasons why the BJP begins the impending first phase on the back foot. First, look at the larger picture. The NDA holds 46 or less than half the 102 seats. Its vote share stands at 42.4% and I'll show you some of those numbers on your screens. The India Alliance is ahead of the NDA in seats but not vote share. Yes viewers, just look at these numbers. India Alliance has 49 seats, NDA 46 seats. But aside from the NDA, if we focus on the BJP, then the data shows it is the shakiest across the 102 constituencies. In phase one, the BJP has never won 50% of the seats up for grabs in phase one in 2019. In fact, the BJP contested only 60 seats across these 102 constituencies in 2019. Admittedly, the BJP won 40 out of the 60 contests, which is a very creditable conversion ratio. But even so, if it wants to get close to the 400 seat mark, it needs to win big in this phase. And also on the seats where it had never won. The BJP is contesting 17 additional seats this time. But a majority of these are in Tamil Nadu where the BJP has only ever won one seat. If it doesn't win more seats in Tamil Nadu, it will be very difficult for the BJP to go beyond the 303 seats it already holds in Parliament. So can the BJP pick up additional seats? It has never won. This brings us to consider a second set of data points. In this phase, there are only nine super strong seats. That is seats won by the BJP or the Congress in all three Lok Sabha elections since 2009. Of these nine, the BJP has six, Jabalpur, Churu, Bikaner, Siddhi, Pilibit and Balaghat. The Congress holds the remaining three, Koliabor, Chindwala and Shillong. Beyond the strongholds, there are 21 swing seats across 102 constituencies. This is to say almost a fifth of the seats have changed hands. To be specific, the same party won these seats in 2009 and 2019, but not in 2014. These 21 seats could go either way. And given that the BJP can only count six seats as bastions, it can't be sure of maintaining its conversion rate. This is why phase one is not only unpredictable, but also puts all parties on an equal footing. As I have gone over the numbers with you, let's also look at the vote share. 
Even in vote share terms, the BJP's dominance is an absolute across this phase. According to the data in 60 of the 102 phase 1 seats that the BJP contested in 2019, look at those numbers. The party secured vote shares above 50% in 34 seats. Between 30 to 50% in 19 seats and below 30% in 7 seats. The Congress isn't far behind either. It contested 63 seats of the 102 seats and in these it polled above 50% in just 10 seats. Just look at the head-to-head. -head. In 36 seats it secured between 30 and 50% of the votes polled. The problem for the Congress is that it is a larger share of weaker seats than the BJP. It polled only between 10 to 30 percent of the votes in nine seats and below 10 percent in 10 seats. So in 19 seats, it's really weak. If it is able to pull in anti-incumbency votes against the BJP in these seats, it might pull off a few surprises. And that's why the Prime Minister constantly targets the Congress because he doesn't want them to pick up any of the anti-incumbency votes. The third party of significance is the DMK. Of the 24 seats that the DMK contested in 2019, it won a huge chunk, 19 seats with a vote share above 50%. In five others, it polled between 30 and 50% of the votes. This means that the BJP will have to pull off a miracle if it has to wrest seats from the DMK. Let's open this up. This is going to be an interesting conversation tonight because it is rare that the BJP starts off on the back foot, so to speak, or as an underdog, to having to prove its mettle. And that's only because, let's be honest, the BJP has set itself a 400-plus target. Was it only looking at 272? We wouldn't be having a conversation. We would be saying that, yes, the BJP starts off on a massive, massive advantage. Smita Prakash, how do you see this phase one? It's interesting from the point of view of numbers. It could go theoretically either which way, but there is a factor called the Modi factor. And the BJP says, Modi hai, to mumkin hai. Tamil Nadu could be ours. Other seats that we have never won on could be ours. Do you see it that way or do you think it's a fight? I think, uh, firstly, I think there's an adrenaline rush that at last it's beginning. Uh, you know, uh, we've covered so many elections, uh, uh, Rahul, and uh, in spite of that, there's excitement every time there's an election which comes in. Uh, and as you mentioned, over 100 constituencies across uh, 21 states going to polls, and no mean task to organize such a mammoth uh, uh, poll and so uh, a hat tip to the election commission and the who will be on duty tomorrow just to ensure that we can exercise our uh, right uh, in a fe fearless manner, in a free manner and the entire world watches this uh, exercise that is going to start tomorrow. So I think uh, there is also this sense of pride that all of us have. Uh, yes, we are all divided when it comes to, uh, you know, which way our loyalties rise, uh, uh, ride, which way I'm talking about the political parties. But in spite of that, a, a sense of, you know, achievement that we have reached this position till now yes. that we can conduct these polls and we should pat ourselves on the back. As far as what you were talking about, you know, uh, the South Indian states going to polls tomorrow, that is the Tamil Nadu especially, that is, I think, uh, which everybody is uh, looking at because of the uh, investment, the personal investment that Modi has done in covering uh, these places through uh, his campaigns and a lot of media attention that Annamalai has drawn uh, in, uh, you know, uh, out here, Annamalai, but just before the Tamilians <laughs> get onto my throat that I'm mispronouncing it. But as you mentioned, you know, that the swing states are just 21 out of 102 and the BJP starts on a weak wicket, which is not usually how it begins uh, the elections or how it goes for the elections. So it will be interesting to see whether uh, the India alliance or the, uh, the opposition keeps a momentum going like they have in the first phase where they are in a stronger wicket. Yeah. And uh, how the BJP uh, manages to turn it around in their advantage if they do. Well, geography is important. And let me tell you, viewers, there is something called the Hawa effect. The wind, as they say. And sometimes, and, and, and one has to look at this. If Tamil Nadu endorses the BJP in the manner that Anna Malai says that they will, then you can expect that 
rush, that hawa to sweep across India, then we will know there's a Modi wave. In fact, Modi will be looking at this phase very, very closely. Let me tell you, viewers. Birinder Chaudhary, Dr. Birinder Chaudhary, you're a political analyst who crunches numbers, and I want to ask you, if BJP needs to get 400 plus, how many must it win in this phase? Give us an overview of the numbers, and I'll open it up to all the others right now. Uh, Namaskar. There are four hard facts for this target. Number one, Prime Minister Modi has said in the parliament, they will cross, means NDA will cross 400, BJP will cross 370. So first is NDA. If NDA has to cross 400 plus, means tomorrow NDA has to get by hook or crook 75 seats. If BJP has to cross 370, by hook or crook, BJP has to get 67 seats. The, now the question is, the real, it, real terms, BJP has out of 102, only 40 seats. And NDA has only 50 seats. The big question is, will BJP get 67 out of 102? The big question is, will NDA get 75 out of 102? So, the target is 75 for the NDA and 67 for the BJP. Let me bring in Dr. Raman here. And yeah. Shekhar Ayer also there. Dr. Raman, I yeah. think you said, Rahul. Uh, Rahul, you took my name. Yes, go ahead. Uh, I don't know why uh, uh, Mr. Chaudhary had to repeatedly say by hook or crook. <laughs> I mean, he said it two or three times, which sort of... No, so don't worry. You know, Prashant Bhushan and company have been already shown the door by the Supreme Court today. Uh, I think he only used it as a manner of speaking uh, because there is desperation. Let's, let's be honest. Look, the Prime Minister has set himself this target. Now, whether he takes it seriously, what's it done for Dr. Raman, I don't know. I mean, you know, he might be just doing it to boost the morale of his card. But what do you think? This, this Tamil Nadu is a state that stands in the way the DMK. I've shown the numbers. Look at the dominance of the DMK with the Congress in tow. Uh, this is an obstacle, no doubt. And a large number of those 17 seats extra that the BJP is contesting in this phase are going to be in Tamil Nadu. What is your number for Tamil Nadu? And then we'll open it up to Shazia Ilmi and others. Look, uh, Rahul, I've said this multiple times. This election for the BJP in Tamil Nadu, they will be able to improve their vote share. They are not going to win a significant number of seats. Maybe one maximum two, perhaps zero as well, but certainly not more than that. And I think that the expectations that have been raised that the BJP is going to win six to eight seats, the NDA is going to win 12 seats, their alliance partners, particularly the PMK, is going to draw a blank. If at all, they may win uh, Mr. Sandhumani's seat in Dharmapuri. Otherwise, there is no chance. So I think that there has got to be some level of practical, uh, uh, you know, can I ask you, uh, Dr. Yeah. Raman, Dina Malar has yeah. done some sort of a survey where they predicted two seats for the week. Do you, the, Coimbatore is one and I think, I think it is uh, Rameswaram or Kanyakumari, Kanyakumari, Kanyakumari. yes. Uh, okay. Are these the two okay, seats I'll, that you think the BJP has a chance on? See, the BJP is, has a chance of competing in about five seats in Tamil Nadu. They are Tirunelveli, they are um, Kanyakumari, they are... Um, uh, Coimbatore, and there are two more seats, which their alliance partners, which is Velour and uh, um, Theni, where and one more seat, six seats, which is Ramanathapuram, six seats where they will be competitive. They will, in almost all certainty, they are likely to finish at least second there. But in the rest of the 34 seats, it's very likely, barring three other seats. In about 30 seats, they okay. are likely to finish third. So the point is whether okay. they can. You know, edge over the line in at least one or two of those seats. Modi, Modi is on the ticket and he has invested a lot of energy in Tamil Nadu, even symbolically. Let me bring in Shekhar Ayer on this. Look, I always believe that this election, Shekhar Ayer, is about bringing Delhi closer to Chennai. It's fundamentally that. Uh, for too long, the DMK and the ADMK have said that, look, we are wrong. The DMK and the ADMK have said that, look, we exist in our own orbit. We are different from the people in the north. You heard Rahul Gandhi who sort of also tries to play up that, you know, big gap. I think Mr. Modi is trying to bridge this gap, whether it was using of the Sengol or, you know, the Kashi corridor. Uh, there are several 
several initiatives that he has taken from day one. Is that really fundamentally what this is, election is really about in, in, in Tamil Nadu? You are right, Rahul. It, I, I mean, the whole effort is to make a very good beginning and to do it in an uh, earnest way so that the BJP goes on a, is looking at a long term uh, project. Because whatever uh, per, what percentage it gains or what or two seat it wins, definitely it became a, a big factor in the next two years before the assembly elections are held. That is the purpose with which the Prime Minister entrusted the task to Anamalai to do the Padayatra, followed by the kind of forays he has made addressing several rallies, road shows, to show that as far as BJP is concerned, Tamil Nadu is a serious business. They are not, they are not uh, seasonal birds who have come for the elections. At the same time, when we are discussing Tamil Nadu, we must also remember, you mentioned how DMK had won 19 seats with more than 50% vote. Hmm. See, at that time, the DMK was in the opposition. This time, they are ruling party. So, there is also a factor of anti-incumbency at work, displeasure among voters regarding the conduct of ministers, conduct of the local representatives. These are also factors weighing on the mind. Now, our Chaudhary Saab just mentioned hook or crook. I think that this... Hook or crook part is largely true for these Dravidian parties in Tamil Nadu. Because <laughs> this evening, this evening is a crucial evening uh, for all these, uh, their party strategists. And the kind of seizures that have been made by election commission in Tamil Nadu has largely also affected this operation, the, uh, the, the, the crook part. Oh, I mean, this is an unsaid part, he's but upset this with is a that. definitely a factor uh, which is going to play tonight. Oh, wow. That's a big, big claim. Big claim. Big claim, Tehseen Punawala, the crook factor is what Shekhar Ayer is building on. It was introduced by doctor, but uh, it has found... No, no, one second, one second. Let, 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 you know, uh, one second, Dr. Raman. There are two doctors here on the show. Yes, Tehseen Punawala. What doctor are you? Spin doctor? Okay, spin this. Money found. Lot of... You know how it works. You know how it works on the ground, don't you? No, so let me just come to two or three uh, issues that I want to raise. The most money any political party got BJP is obviously a party that I believe encourages crooks to go with them. Imagine people who are, uh, who are charged for, for money laundering are giving money to the BJP. But that's not the issue. Oh, and please. I understand. No, no, I absolutely stand by that. And I understand what Dr. Saab said by hook or by crook. And the BJP will try to win by crook. All these, all these polarization that's happening, calling opposition money, league, a Muslim league, all of this is the crook that the BJP, uh, crook. 300 odd crows were found but, in the boot. So then, the prime, the, should, so then the prime minister. So then the prime minister of this great country must apologize to this country on CNN News 18 mm -hmm. for misleading the country on demonetization. He should apologize to the country. But that is not the issue. Let's stick on the issues at hand. No, no, no. Why, the why, BJP why, is going to because he said mm -hmm. in 50 days, give me 50 days, uh, cash will disappear from well, Swiss bank money going up to cash coming up. people to generate more and more and more and more and not reveal it. And for, and, uh, and, and that, the, and that the, is and that the, is no and, defense. And 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 and, and, uh, he and the ability. He's not under the mattress. And the, in fact, if he were, BJP, then you would cry privacy, and, invasion of privacy, and the, etc. And He's not ability, under the mattress And the ability of the BJP to become the richest political party in the world in just 10 years of governance is a, is a, is a case study one should see in okay. and therefore bringing in money power. But, and, right. and, 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 unequal money power. But let me say, despite right. this unequal money power, I am putting my money where my mouth is. No hook, no crook. In Tamil Nadu, the BJP will get as many seats okay. as the Honorable Prime Minister's press conferences. Zero. BJP okay, you guys is have not to make up your mind. The Congress has different estimates on the number of seats. Yes, I know Priyanka Ji said 180. I'll, and, I'll come and, to that. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll come to that. I'll come to that. I know I Priyanka Ji said 180. You know, this I've heard before 2019. Shazi Almi wants to no, come no, in. I have to make one, one, point. one second, one second. The BJP will not cross me, 160 seats. Okay, okay. Look, the BJP, if horses were courses, this is the BJP's so You would have won the 2019 if, if horses were... If, if, if horses were wishes, if wishes were horses. Have, if wishes were horses, you would have won your, you know, uh, you would have won your uh, 2019 election. But, but just the one BJP second. thinks I remember, that the election is a unicorn. I remember unicorn. what people said. But the BJP this time we are coming. The unicorn, which is a mythical, okay, okay, which is a okay, mythical okay. creature, Shazia and, and the 400 seats is as mythical as the unicorn, okay. the, which which flies on rainbows. Okay, okay, okay. You see, horses also come in different uh, colors uh, in the Indian political. Uh, framework as we all know. The India Alliance is the second, white horses second, that second. Arjuna rode. Right, right, right. Well, the BJP could be the dark horse in Tamil Nadu. Shazia, I just want to ask you this. This election is critical because it's going to test one thing. Is there a Modi wave? I'm not saying that there is popularity is being tested or this is a referendum. Whether there is actually a Modi wave after 10 years of incumbency. 
बिकॉज दैट्स वॉट द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेज एवरी इलेक्शन रैली इज आई कैन सेंस इट इस इस बार चार सौ पार दिस इज अ टेस्ट ऑफ द मोदी वेव दिस फेज फेज वन I think all the phases if you look at them I think we are voting for uh, this is these are Lok Sabha elections and we voting for a prime minister we voting for the central government and everybody in India knows who makes the best pm who has a vision for the country who has a blueprint as to how we go ahead what he has delivered in last 10 years whether it's modi ki guarantee or his credibility or the the gains that people have had yeah. it's just the huge work that has been done and the, the beneficiaries you know and that's a big number and across the sector across the spectrum when you look at you know for, there is something for middle classes there is something for the very poor i am looking at the biggest food program here i'm looking at 25 crore indians being lifted out of multi dimensional poverty i'm looking at izzat ghars which is toilets and many many mudra yojana for instance jandhan yojana mean 50 crore indians have, have been part of it so it's huge i can go on talking about that but i really want to um, uh, say something to tehsin tehsin you talking about in, you know bjp being the richest party now it's also the biggest party not just of india but of the world but you know it got 37% in terms of electoral bonds 63% went to you so bjp should have identified that's an true number rahul i'd like, I'd like a fact check on that seats. the bjp cannot come on national tv and make up no, fake fact. numbers it, it is a fact it is a fact, a fact. It is the opposition no, never got no, 63% the Prime bjp Minister, got 50.8 no, no, they come and repeatedly no, make a lie second one no it's an unfair claim they already have money par now you can't lie on national tv they say that people get nervous very fast one second one second one second one fact check kijiye 63% No, 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 Prime Minister said second. this. Electoral bonds, thirty-seven percent. No, no, that doesn't mean it's right. Well, no, exactly, it's not right. One second, one second. Right. It is right. The, the it point is, is everywhere. Oh. No, no, one second, one second. It is right. One second. Thirty-seven percent. At least based okay. on argument, one second, one second. Why don't we come to this? One second, one second. One second, one second. One second, one second. Last thing. Oh God. Yeah. No, no, one more thing. Tessin, why interjecting? I no, never spoke when you speak. Because you can come back. You can come back. You can come back to this. You have a fact checker with you. They say so many lies. You can come back. I will come back to this. If I ask you a question right now, you will be floundering. No, Rahul has a small figure. Please. Rahul, another figure. Yeah. Go ahead. Rahul, the last bit that I want to say. Yeah. Two thousand two hundred crores of stacks of cash has been found. by the so called agencies that i feel work at the behest of bjp now where that is real cash that is for people to see and that has been there in the counting machines and you know about seven or eight trucks would be needed to take it from somewhere all come from opposition or wherever the raids have happened oh. so clearly you're not that innocent there was because there was cash it wasn't even smoke and fire there was actual real cash okay well let Nab. me just say let me just say on the electoral bond by, issue so, the so bjp received figures. one second on the electoral bond issue though we i don't know why we are going down that one second because you brought it in so one second you brought it i i just want to come back to time on that issue because the bjp got about 6000 crores plus out of the 12 roughly 12 and a half thousand crores so you do the maths around 50% of them but i think what shazia enmi is referring to is actually another number that number is of those people who contributed who were raided that's what the prime minister said by the ed the bjp from those people only got 33% the rest went to the opposition which is a fact now that has been easily proven and you can go back and have a look at those contributions but we are not going down that route my simple question and i'm coming back to the dr virendra choudhury as well as you tehsin purana yes. very quickly i want to come second. back to you just one second that, sir just that number is also incorrect one second doctor one, Sorry. one second one second doctor raman no i am saying that it's been given and that's what that was one second one second what that was number is there everywhere one second please please donate please 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 to bjp through bond please can you please 698 crore was donated after can you please one second one second the the prime minister is speaking about that small amount of money the thousand after the raids in that he has picked out this number so just give me 30 thousand? seconds that no please dr raman right? now let's not this is not that forum we'll come to that debate somewhere else i just want to come back sure. to tehsin very quickly tehsin purawala you talk about how the dmk and the congress represent tamil nadu's interests and smita prakash is at hand right. i i wanted to come in on this also i want to ask you a question your alliance partner the dmk says we must get kachatiwu back correct why hasn't the congress taken a position on this you say 
correct in the south you say why hasn't the beach that, to be taken away? one second doctor Where is it in the dr raman please one second sorry okay. one second please sir i'm not asking you i'll come back to you tehsin punala please i want to ask you on the issue of ca why is rahul gandhi silent in wayanad on ca the left is asking i'm not asking these questions the dmk wants to know in 2026 when this is going to become a big issue because the bjp will make it one what is the congress going to do should we get kachativu back okay may i answer that question yes please i think whatever the question should be asked to the congress and legitimately it should be answered congress should answer but the le- no, no, uh, see, no, 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 no please no, please allow me to answer on this allow me to answer on this specific now you can't please. suddenly I'm distance not, yourself from the congress i am not disclosing i am saying i am going one step take further take a position have i am taking one i am taking one i am saying is the dmk wrong in asking for of course not i am saying the dmk is right let me take both step so then why did the congress give it away sir i sir i request you please allow me please allow me i request you i'll give you answer i am saying the congress is also wrong it gave it away they were anti national forget the exchange of forget the exchange of property forget we got the fishing area forget all of this last 30 years right. 16 years has been okay, bjp now, including 10 years of mr modi okay, now don't okay. interrupt what did the okay, prime minister do second. to bring it back he did as he did he did as much yeah, as his okay. press conference careful, careful, zero careful i know what you're going to say But, but he will come during an election in Nikhil. One second, one second. That is my objective. One minute, one minute. Congress खराब है ना? One minute. आपने क्या किया? One minute, one minute. तीस साल से तो सोलह साल में ये थे ना? ये थे या नहीं थे? One second. क्या किया इन्होंने? Okay, now don't speak over me. The argument. The the argument was a very simple, Rahul, straightforward Rahul question, which has been dodged. Suddenly, Tehsin has distanced himself from his party. No, no, I'm right standing now he was by speaking. them. No, you're not. Then you I'm should say that the Congress them. should I'm commit itself. I'm saying hypothetically itself. they are wrong. Not hypothetically, I'm my dear friend. I'm saying hypothetically they are wrong. Okay. Okay. Hypothet- they are wrong. Okay. 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 Smita Prakash, one now. second before Ten before Shahzia comes in. One second, Smita Prakash. Smita Prakash on this issue of who represents Tamil interests. This is an issue which has exposed a lot of people, like the BJP. True. See, I'll tell you one thing that none of the issues that we talk about have been uh, the India Alliance doesn't see it as something which is cohesive. They don't see the same issues. Like what if if DMK picks up the Sanatan issue? That's not something that the Congress picks up. That's not something that Akhilesh picks up. Even if we see only Tamil Nadu, what uh, the uh, the India Alliance partners are talking is not. the same thing at all it doesn't resonate at all you know it uh, the issues are changing also for the congress the issues are changing on a geographical basis and on a weekly basis so there are random geographical basis and on a weekly basis so there are random promises which are made for uh, caste there are uh, backward caste random uh, for water issues farmer issues uh, can you have the congress talking about kaveri in uh, yeah. tamil nadu while they have a government uh, in uh, in karnataka on the kaveri issue you don't see that happening they have a chief minister of their own in karnataka upper riparian state whereas in tamil nadu stalin is an alliance partner and they are both fighting over the kaveri river uh, uh, water issue it's a very so good you're not point. going to see that and you know uh, it, so that is why randomly issues keep changing and, and i so and it, i, it and I believe matter. that your your now 12 hours less than 12 hours 11 and a half hours from when the first vote is going to be cast viewers and we still don't have a common cmp a manifesto for india alliance because they're basically divided on everything from nuclear weapons to alliance the quad to every international yeah. issue the america china they're divided on everything one side says no we should be friends with china the other says no smite china then they say come out of quad others say no we should be in quad some people say let's rid of the nuclear weapons biological weapons chemical weapons that's all become absolute passivist the other side is silent on this issue it's a real hotchpotch it's a real hotchpotch but dr birender choudhary i want to ask you a specific question Rah- Rahul, in tamil nadu by... yes yes one second yeah Shazia, Rahul, they're yes. bound by one thing which is uh, b- they have to defeat modi Okay, and well, that you know that's not, big, a, uh, you know, that, that, that's not a that's it's not that's not a easy. Yeah. That, one second, one second. But but okay, okay, okay. Because okay, okay. we want to defeat but, but, him. But yeah, but 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 there has to be not, ideological not coherence. Not even that. If you look at there is no manifesto. They couldn't even decide who amongst them is going to be a presidential, a prime ministerial candidate. They couldn't even decide that. Viewers, forget about a manifesto. I don't know what will happen. One second. Here BJP. Here BJP's. Here BJP. One second. Then one second. Here BJP's. Here's BJP's principal vote catchers already around. Said he is preparing a hundred-day plan. He told that to Smita Prakash in his interview, and on the other side, we don't even know what the basic convergence is on the leading issues. But Dr. Virendra Choudhury, the BJP has done some social engineering 
in uh, Tamil Nadu. You have 30 seconds to wrap it up and tell me what it is. Uh, just I will tell you two things. On data factor, that is a hard facts, that BJP got four Lok Sabha seats, highest in 99, and vote share was 7%. Another fact is that BJP this time, perhaps first time, social engineering fact, if you see Thevar, Baniyar, Dalit, Gounder, Nadar, never happened in BJP history in Tamil Nadu. So many social factors are in favor of BJP, okay. plus electoral facts. Well, so I think <coughs> bright chance for BJP okay. in Tamil Nadu. I'll take, a, I'll take a short break on this point. It's going to be riveting tomorrow. I just hope that the turnout is high because that's what we all want. Voters to express faith that their ballot counts. Please go out there, vote. Short break. The welcome for the Home Minister in Gandhi Nagar is concerned. You see that the crowds and the kind of welcome that he is receiving is testimony in itself. was a member of parliament multiple times from here and that's what you get to see on the roads as well scores of supporters and mind you it's a very 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 country day but that doesn't in a way no damn not dampen people's spirits at all Akansha. Absolutely. We'll try and re-establish that connection with you over there, uh, Sonal, but um, Payal, but uh, important to also take our viewers through, you know, all those visuals that are speaking for themselves as that grand welcome for the Home Minister takes place in his home turf of Gandhi Nagar. As Payal was also highlighting how significant that entire constituency is for not just Amit Shah, but uh, the entire Bharatiya Janata Party from all the way from the grassroots level. You can see the history as far as Gandhi Nagar uh, and the state of Gujarat is concerned in itself. The Home Minister's bastion over there in Gandhi Nagar, the Prime Minister hailing from the same state, LK Advani also having batted uh, from the same state. It has gained national attention being represented by high profile leaders like LK Advani, most recently of course as you can see Amit Shah. The constituency encompasses seven assembly sectors segments has a very strong urban presence with 79% 79% huge urban electorate and reflects a significant Hindu majority demographic so as far as Amit Shah's magic figure of 10 lakh par could well be a reality as you can see giving him competition is Sonal Patel from the Congress party who so far is only crying foul but uh, let's quickly go back to Payal who uh, will give us uh, an in-depth sense of how significant has Gandhi Nagar been for the Bharatiya Janata Party. Uh, Payal, over to you. Alright, we we'll try and re-establish that connection with uh, Payal, but as you can see, uh, as far as Gandhi Nagar Lok Sabha constituency is concerned, it has been a stronghold of the Bharatiya Janata Party. And uh, as far as Home Minister's visit is concerned, he is on a visit to Gandhi Nagar and Ahmedabad where he will be hosting several road shows. Today, this one is in fact uh, all the way from Sanand. Viewers, as an Indian who is proud of his country, I'm going to ask you some basic questions. And you know my questions always are pointed ones. In whose lexicon is a terrorist a martyr? In whose book is the death of terrorists sworn to the destruction of the country an unfortunate event? 
these aren't rhetorical questions viewers they need to be posed tonight this is because the congress party's lead spokesperson supriya shrinet the lady on your screens and remember she's the national spokesperson of this political party has sparked a massive row by labeling the 29 maoists as martyrs as shaheed can you believe it viewers these craven criminals who have been ambushing our security forces orphaning children committing sexual atrocities on innocent women taking over villages setting up a parallel administration talking about the removal of our constitution these people are martyrs for the congress's national spokesperson viewers these maoists are weaponized by china they get their weapons from china viewers that's what our intelligence establishment believes this is the same congress party and i'll come to that in a few minutes viewers that once called these maoists these very same criminals these terrorists as the greatest internal security threat to our country today viewers the congress party i don't know what's gone wrong the congress party believes that they are martyrs first listen in because this has created quite a bit of heat main is pe koi rajneeti nahi karna chahti mujhe lagta hai iski bilkul gehan jaanch honi chahiye aur un sab log jo shaheed hue हमारे सुरक्षा कर्मी भी कुछ घायल हुए उन सब को हमारी संवेदनाएं हैं और इसमें कोई राजनीति का सवाल ही नहीं है सेना का अपमान सुरक्षा बलों का अपमान आतंकी मेरे भाईजान क्या यही कांग्रेस पार्टी की बन चुकी है पहचान क्या यही इंडिया अलायंस की बन चुकी है पहचान मित्रों हमें पता है कि कांग्रेस पार्टी का एक लंबा और पुराना चरित्र और डीएनए रहा है दे हैव अ लॉन्ग हिस्ट्री जहां पर उन्होंने दल हित को देश हित के ऊपर और वोट बैंक नीति और अपने वोट बैंक की सुरक्षा को राष्ट्र नीति और राष्ट्रीय सुरक्षा के ऊपर हमेशा रखा है व्यूअर्स व्हाट एक्सप्लेन्स दिस अनडाइंग सिंपथी फॉर स्लेन टेरर स्पेशली व्हेन वन कंसीडर्स दैट द कांग्रेस इटसेल्फ फ्लैग देम एज अ थ्रेट टू नेशनल सिक्योरिटी लेट मी टेक यू थ्रू द टाइम्स वेन द यूपीए single these individuals out as terrorists manmohan singh former prime minister nationalism is the single biggest internal security challenge ever faced by our country september 2011 p chidambaram ex home minister most violent movement in india is not terrorism or insurgency but less left wing extremism may 2013 jairam ramesh congress mp at that time said maoist extort money from government contracts anybody who spreads terror is a terrorist December 2018 Bhupesh Baghel ex chief minister of Chhattisgarh said Naxalism will be eliminated with the support of civilians in Naxal affected areas eliminated is the word Today when an encounter has taken place the same congress viewers the same congress wants this event probed Now before the break Shazia Ilmi said that the problem in the congress party is because it hates Modi it wants him out it will do anything to be critical of him even if it means siding with terrorists viewers the congress party is silent on its alliance partner the left cpm saying they want to get rid of india's nuclear weapons they want to get rid of all our chemical and biological weapons same congress party viewers I want to bring in Tehsin Punawala. Tehsin Punawala, look, I I'm sure you are sensible enough. Yes, what? Yes, Shahzeb me. Want to say something? You know, and you know the sad part of it is Supriya Srinath knows precious little. In 2013, in one of the worst attacks where the Congress convoy was ambushed by the same Naxalites who she calls martyrs today if you please. they had killed and slain the top congress leadership including the salwa judam head and 18 congress workers vc shukla was critically injured aji joki at that point of time had gone separately by flight but 20 or 18 to 20 congress workers died 
and this is what Supriya Shrinath has to say today. Okay. And not what? just that, this is an insult to our, our BSF Jawans, to our paramilitary forces, to the Adivasis who have been targeted by the same Maoists, insurgents, left-wing extremists, whatever you want to call them. And imagine having such sympathy for them. I mean, this is the attitude of Congress party. So they, uh, they have either no idea of their own history or they have no sense of righteousness. Okay, well, one second. Let me, just, let me just bring in Tehseen Punala. You've, uh, you, you've said perhaps no. what a large number of Indians, I mean, I'm talking about Shazia Ilmi. She said what perhaps a large number of Indians are thinking tonight. Uh, Tehseen Punala, I know that uh, you are not going to defend this. I know that you're a patriot at heart. But I have to ask you this. Is this Modi disregard for Modi, hate for Modi now going too far? To the point where the Congress party thinks it has become legitimate for them to oppose every and everything. Even if it means today to stand with those that actually want to overturn the Indian state, let alone anything else, at the behest of our, one of our enemies. Rahul, thank you so much. And I just want to make some very important points. So I just hope I'm not interrupted by Shazia ji. But very important points I need to make. So I'll just take the liberty of something. The only political party to have lost its top leadership to terrorists is the Congress. Two prime ministers, as Shazia ji said, rightly said, the entire top leadership in Chhattisgarh was wiped out by these leftists. Prime Minister Manmohan Singh took them off. And even today, the Gandhi family particularly has a lot of threats from uh, Naxals, and we know this. Let's not go into those details. The Congress has ma been martyred. Nobody from the BJP. But let's come to the crux of the issue. The crux of the issue is that while these Maoists, while these Naxalites need to be eliminated, read my lips, eliminated, there also along with that in that area must be a process of reconciliation, which I credit the current Honorable Prime Minister as well. Nagaland, reconciliation, same, people getting weapons from China. Tripura Liberation Front, who was in alliance with them? BJP, what is the agenda even today to have a separate state outside the Union of India? Nagaland, the Prime Minister promised you in the interview that the, that the agreement will be given within two days. Has he given the agreement? What does the agreement with the Nagaland people say? As per the Naga terrorists, it says that they must have a separate parliament, separate flag. Now, why haven't they released it? Look, reconciliation within the constitution must have. And I think that's what Supriya meant. You must have reconciliation because these are our people. These are Indians. They've gone astray. Anyone firing on our soldiers must be met. We should meet their fate. But... Reconciliation. Shaheed. Can we move away? If we are moving away, Shaheed. is the Prime Minister moving Shaheed. away from Nagaland? No, no, left one insurgency? Second, one second. Let me just, no, no, one left second. Left insurgency? One second, one second, one second, one second, one second, one second. Look, there are people in the national security apparatus Correct. all through our history after we became independent. There are million mutinies, as they say, across India. Right? Right. There's always been a view that we must engage. And that happens backtrack there's many things that happen on parallel tracks but we all must unite on one point that when encounters happen then we should be standing with our security forces Correct. not with the not with the enemy now sure. they can be your own citizens after all there have been own citizens who have picked up the gun and tried to bring down the indian state that doesn't mean that we have to invite everybody for chai, coffee, biscuit. No, I'm just saying. I absolutely Given agree the fact you. that they don't want to resolve the issues within the ambit of the constitution. But I don't think Supriya Srinath was saying this. Supriya Srinath is unfortunately been in controversy now. Not just for this, but a little while back also. And I know that there were red faces in the Congress. You know what she said. I mean, about Kangana Ranaut. I, I do I have to say this again. But Rahul, can I ask no, you? No, I'm not so talking about individuals. I'm no, talking about. I'm not, can I, can I, can I make that's a larger I'm point? You. So you can, As a patriot, and you're two you patriots. Know, one second, speaking. one second, please. First of all, you need to say that Supriya Srinet, action should be taken against her. I am saying very clearly. Nothing precedes my tricolor or my armed forces. No, no, you should make it. No, but, but I want to ask for action. Please. No. Had this been, no, tell me I something. Absolutely I remember. Clear. I remember. Let me take you back a few years, actually. Let me take you back a few. I'll, I'll tell you what the Congress said. There was a time when, in the heat of the moment, one particular leader, Ravi Shankar Prasad, happened to, in a sarcastic vein, actually, say Hafi Said Ji which has been said also by Congress people, and people have been critical of that. Yeah. So have I. At that time, the Congress went and hammers and tongs. Yeah, and, 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 and one second. And the Congress went hammers and tongs after uh, Ravi Shankar Saab yeah. and said, step down, this, that, the other. So I'm asking you today, 
who in the Congress party, whether it is Rahul Gandhi, and remember the Congress gave us this word, the UPA gave us this word, urban naxals. Yes. Okay, in a deposition in the Supreme Court. Correct. You know this. Given your own history of antipathy towards these own citizens, right. which has been criticized by the hard left Correct. in the time. Even Chidambaram was called various names. True. In fact, by Digvijay Singh himself. Correct. I want to ask you today, do you think that this lady, Supriya Shinit, should not be issued a show cause, should not be suspended? Well, she said her statement has been cut. But let me make a larger what point. What has been cut? No, let's no. play it again. No, no, let me, let me no, come on. Let's, let me, let, she's, there is she's no cut here. No, she's and saying, I'm asking statement. you to take a position I tonight. am taking a position. You're a patriot. Very you, clear on would you have issue. tolerated this statement? No. And let me ask you. Let me no, ask you. Let me flip this around. Had a BJP spokesperson gone out and said, and let me ask you this, point blank, that, oh, Hafiz Saeed, if some of his chaps, L.E.T. chaps had been killed, and said that, look, uh, you know, these guys are martyrs. What yes. would you have said? So let me explain what she, let me explain. I'm not playing devil's advocate. I condemned the statement, but let me explain what she was trying to say. And I'm I think only asking you, why isn't the Congress why? acting? Because what she was trying to convey, as per what I am told, is that a procedural inquiry will reveal how they got so many weapons from across the border. Because... We are not talking about the procedural inquiry. Actually, we are talking about them being called the martyrs. Of the Let's Union play government. this bite out again, viewers. You just have to hear this. She's this actually is, asking the Union is, government to take orders. This is actually a big issue. This is internal security we are talking about. Not defined by Rahul Shiv Shankar. By Dr. Manmohan Singh. No, one minute. Why should yes. there be an inquiry? When 29 Naxalites have been killed in one of the biggest operations. Don't go I down mean, that the, route. The we don't need to. We are talking about the word martyr, the legitimization of terrorism. Why should they? Shazi, let me no, forget about the probe. Rahul, That's secondary. Why should there be investigation? Yes, yes. Let me let me just play out this. No, but Rah Rahul, why should there be an investigation? I understand. I Let's just play out this. Supriya said she said there should be an investigation. Yes, I'll come back to you on this. Let's just play out the bite because. संवेदनाएं हैं और इसमें कोई राजनीति का सवाल ही नहीं है नाउ व्यूअर्स व्यूअर्स शी नेवर रिफर टू वन सेकेंड शाजी अलमी शी नेवर रिफर टू प्रोब विथ रिगार्ड्स टू द इनकाउंटर शी वॉज टॉकिंग वन इलेक्टोरल बॉन्ड्स एंड देन शी गोज ऑन टू से व्यूअर्स द जो कोई शहीद हुए 29 terrorists are killed she and they have been forces. no she no, makes she a distinction she made no, a distinction no, she, she goes on she goes on to say that wo gahel jo hamare jawan bhi hue hue no no she was talking for both for you no please no no she's talking viewers, for both viewers, 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 viewers please patriot she is is she yeah. She's a patriot. I don't, she was not calling the Naxals. Uh, she was not calling the Naxals. She was calling the. Let's play it out again. At that time, look, she thought the. There are things that you can justify. You no. can justify. You can play with words. Let's just play this out once again. She Unalloyed. Said, she said, "Listen." Listen. 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 Listen Absolutely unapologetic. This is unacceptable. Unapologetic advocacy for 29 terrorists who were killed. Now, Tehsin Punal, I have to ask you. Yeah. How can you call yourself a terrorist, uh, a patriot, when you are sort of legitimizing what Supriya Shrinath is saying? No, I'm not talking about any individuals. I think left-wing extremism Why is the biggest we talk danger. About you? you talk it's about the Nupur. biggest danger you talk to about our country. Nupur. No, you talked about no, Nupur but. Sharma for days altogether. So I, she I, wasn't I stood an individual. Nupur Sharma. I want to ask you. No, I'm not talking about you personally. I'm talking so about the Congress I, party. I, I, I am I talking think, about the Congress party. They talked about listen, Nupur Sharma. Why should we not talk listen, about Supriya Srinath? She's listen, also a national spokesperson. Listen, Nupur I Sharma believe, was shown the door. Listen, Whether we agree with it or not is an immaterial thing. But I'm asking you. And I'm again repeating, as per Supriya Shinet's statement, this was for the armed forces. However, if it is for the Naxalites, I don't agree with it. I'm very clear. So, should, no, should no consequences follow? She's clarified. What is she clarified? That she was talking about the armed forces. 
But the larger and question is how weapons coming from Nupur China Sharma, into India? Nupur Sharma came out and clarified you know, what she was saying. She even apologized. So therefore, I stood by her. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the Congress Party. Okay. Then it became an issue. Apology came. Everything came. Supriya so Srinath has clarified as she always does. No apology. The Congress lets it go, viewers. What does it tell you? Now remember, who these so-called Maoists are funded by? The CCP. There's enough evidence to suggest this. And viewers, who constantly talks about championing dialogue between India and China? I'm not saying anything. I'm just asking questions. Anyway, Shazi, let me respond to uh, the... Uh, the arguments that have been made here. And answer Nagaland, Tripura, and left wing extremism. One minute, one minute, one minute. They're seeing, they're seeing the fact of the matter is, that fact of the matter is, that this was a very clear, simple victory of BSF, of our forces, of, of Indians and India against terrorist in, uh, insurgents, and there was no need to call them Shaheed and Suraksha Ban later. So I don't know with who, why should her sympathy be with those who have been killing, whose hands are stained with blood of our Divasis, our Jawans, our paramilitary forces and what have you. And I think second time around, this is yet another shocker. First time she said something so obnoxious through her tweet for which she never took responsibility, nor did she apologize. She just passed it off to some other person in the media cell. So uh, we still don't know, but this is unpardonable. I think Congress should make a stand very clear on where they stand vis-a-vis -vis Naxalites, You think Maoists, that's a reasonable, insurgents, reasonable and demand the, from the BJP tonight? Our, our CRPF and BSF. Without what about reasonable demand that she's making that the BJP, that the Congress must come out, make it stand clear. Why hasn't the Congress come out? The Supriya Shinit is the spokesperson and one of the leading spokesperson. She's clarified what she said. She was not talking about the, the left wing extremism. Because we can't have She's different had her standards. party members. Who we can't have different killed. standards for different individuals. Nupur Sharma came out and apologized. They still went for her. They ensured that she was threatened. Today, Nupur Sharma has no freedom left. She can't even come out of her home. Am I not right? Tehseen Punawala? But... Someone like Supriya Srinet is not even going to be questioned. But and you we have to start her. looking at the pathology. But you are questioning the Congress party. Reply. Your own this, party. This is a fact checker. What about the fact checker? Will he look at this? Are you answer why people getting weapons from China? You are bothered about some spokesperson, some fact checker, viewers, some guy who fixes viewers, puncture. You tell me, where are these weapons? Viewers, 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 against BJP that look. allows weapons to come in from China? Look, look, look. Why? Look, Why have they failed? Punawala, have they got AK-47s? Have they Punawala, got AK-56? How are these weapons coming Tehseen in Punawala, India? I'm only How are weapons you, coming in Manipur? I'm only asking you a simple question. You because can vent your spleen. One second. There only a simple question. Should at least a show cause notice be issued to Supriya Srinet? Should the Honorable Home Minister of India step down okay. or no for his repeated failures? Viewers, I can viewers, take action on Supriya. Fundamentally, first, first remove the Home Minister fundamentally when you have, if you do have a fifth column in this country that undermines operations against bona fide terrorists, then how can you blame the Union Home Minister? The fact of the matter is, viewers, the fact of the matter is, there is now a pathology. And it is quite clear. We have a problem. In opposing Modi, we are sometimes picking the wrong side. I'm not saying we as in you and I, but certain political parties. I think we've crossed certain lines. And I don't know if there will be consequences to pay electorally, but certainly viewers, these bites are not making it any easier for the Congress to position itself as an alternative to the Bharatiya Janata Party. I'll take a short break. The welcome for the Home Minister in Gandhi Nagar is concerned. You see that the crowds and the kind of welcome that he is receiving is testimony in itself.
connection with you over there uh, sonal but um, payal but uh, important to also take our viewers through you know all those visuals that are speaking for themselves as that grand welcome for the home minister takes place in his home turf of gandhi nagar as payal was also highlighting how significant that entire constituency is for not just amit shah but uh, the entire bharatiya janata party from all the way from the grassroots level you can see the history as far as gandhi nagar uh, and the state of gujarat is concerned in itself the home minister's bastion over there in gandhi nagar the prime minister hailing from the same state lk advani also having batted uh, from the same state it has gained national attention being represented by high profile leaders like lk advani most recently of course as you can see amit shah the constituency encompasses seven assembly segments has a very strong urban presence with 79% 79% huge urban electorate and reflects a significant hindu majority demographic so as far as amit shah's magic figure of 10 lakh par could well be a reality as you can see giving him competition is sonal patel from the congress party who so far is only crying foul but uh, let's quickly go back to payal who's uh, who will give us uh, an in depth sense of how significant has gandhi nagar been for the bharatiya janata party uh, payal over to you right we try and reestablish that connection with the uh, payal but as you can see uh, as far as gandhi nagar Tejasvi, tell us what is at stake in this election, according to you. The future of Bharat. The future of the youth of India. This is at stake because this election is about choosing the country's leader, the country's prime minister for the next five years. The Congress says that uh, this is about their guarantees versus Modi ki guarantee. What is the difference between Modi ki guarantee and what the Congress is uh, promising? Well, the Congress's guarantees one they are fake promises which never get materialized. Two, the entire economic thinking, the world view of the Congress in promising these objectives is a sheer sure shot pushing of the state of the nation towards bankruptcy. and this will have a debilitating impact a disastrous impact on the future of the youth of the nation i do want to ask you i spoke to uh, dk shivkumar the chief minister deputy chief minister today and he said as far as karnataka is concerned neither modi factor nor ram factor will work in this state what do you have to say about that well uh, what can we say for somebody who chooses to be delusional somebody who chooses to deliberately not acknowledge the ground reality the first thing a political leader must have is a clear understanding of the pulse of the ground you have been following me on this road show yeah. we just passed through uh, the main streets you saw the kind of response that people are uh, uh, welcoming us with the name modi has now become a mantra people are chanting it and the jai shri ram slogans are evoking a sense of hope a sense of self confidence a renewed glory
phase of polling just hours to go before the first phase of polling our only request to all those who have their vote on the 19th of april across the 102 constituencies or seats of the lok sabha 2024 go vote it's a cnn news 18 campaign ladies and gentlemen your vote counts so go ahead and vote do your job do perform your fundamental right and also your duty towards Bharat. This is to elect a government that is going to govern this nation over the next five years and your vote counts. And that's what we'd like to say here at CNN News 18 at our brand new studios. This is a sneak peek of what we have in store for you on our election coverage. But for you, all you need to do is Bahar Nikal or Ungli Kar, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we'd like you to do. Go vote. It's a CNN News 18 campaign. We would like you to go ahead and cast and exercise your democratic right to jao.